Welcome back to Lofton Farms, everybody. Uh, it's finally that time of year, my favorite time of year. Uh, we're finally going to start chopping corn silage. So uh, we got to get everything ready for that today. Hope to start chopping today. Uh, going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, it's been a real bad year here in, I guess, central North Carolina. Uh, just the way the weather worked out, we planted corn and it rained for a couple weeks, enough for the corn to grow. And of course it got all the weeds and grass to start growing in the corn. And then uh, it just turned off a drought for a long time while the corn was in it in its important growing stage, I guess you could say. Uh, so corn's just not been that great for anybody around this area this year. So uh, we ended up letting the grass grow in our silage fields and uh, we're going to end up mowing it with a hay mower and picking it up with a pickup head. So not your normal corn silage harvest, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. You can't control the weather. But anyway, hope you guys will uh, stay tuned and follow along with us. And hopefully we don't break a lot of stuff. We've got a new chopper, so excited to try that. And yeah, let's just see where it goes. Alright y'all, so we got the the new to us Gale 1065 hooked up to the 4440. Uh, we got it all ready to go the other week when we were patching some holes and stuff. If you've seen in our other video, we went ahead and greased it up and got everything ready on it, hopefully. Dad is down there in the bottoms uh, that are full of sand and stuff. We knew they wouldn't make anything. So uh, we're chopping that this year. He has started mowing that so that it'll be drying. For a few hours before we get ready to start chopping i'm gonna get the kubota out and go get the silage body hooked up to it and then i gotta get the dump wagon out for the chopper and we should be ready to go so we got the wagon or the silage body rather hooked up to the kubota uh i know somebody asked in the past uh i don't remember which silage video but one of my silage videos but this is a 1640 gale wagon uh, this wagon runs off the Charolais motor, so it's just hooked into the remotes on the tractor. You just hold the lever and it runs the chain. Uh, the door is an automatic lock system back there that works off of the chain, so when you hit the lever it unlocks. When it's unloaded, the door automatically locks back. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get the cameras cleaned off on this wagon. I put cameras on this wagon because you can't see too great out of the tractor. Backing in it, especially at night and whatnot. So. We put a camera system up in there. Right up there. So I'm going to get them wiped off. Uh, and that should be all to get ready to this wagon. Uh, I will oil the, the one chain that runs from the Charolais motor to the to the chains inside the body. Um, other than that, this wagon's ready to go.
Well, y'all, we're finally chopping. Uh, it is Thursday now. Uh, we got everything ready on Monday of this week. Um, we started chopping Tuesday. Got a little bit of drone footage of us chopping the bottoms and everything. Got about 10 acres done so far. Uh, got about 10 more left to do. So far, really pleased with the chopper. Uh, it's been doing a really good job. We ain't had no major breakdowns. And uh, so far, we've made it a whole season without putting the universal joint in. So. All right, I guess I'll talk a little bit about this chopper. Uh, there's not much about them on the internet or anything. Uh, normally when I buy something, I like to look it up on the internet, especially on YouTube, and learn a little bit about it. Uh, actually, I can't find many videos at all about these Gale choppers uh, exactly like this one. So this is a Gale 1065, as you can tell by the video. Uh, I guess... The first thing or the major conflict about them that I found reading on the internet, what I could read about them, is this chopper, if you watch my last video working on it, it actually has, I guess you could say, two blowers, or as I call it, a slinger and a blower. So right behind the knives, it has, I guess, a, a two-foot round slinger, almost like a fertilized slinger. And instead of an auger, that slinger catches all the silage off of the knives, throws it over to the main blower, which blows it up the spout. Uh, a lot of people are saying that they stop up bad, that uh, they just give all kinds of trouble with bolts breaking in them and whatnot. Uh, now, I've only chopped 10 acres with it, but so far I'm very pleased with the slinger and stuff. I've never run a chopper with a cross auger that's basically an auger that runs from the knives to the blower. So I can't say a whole lot about them. I have watched a lot of YouTube videos of people running them and stuff, and to me they seem to stop up a lot. Uh, so far I like this blower better than a cross auger. Uh, I guess the second main thing about this chopper is when we bought it, when you would make a turn, our old one did it a little bit, but this one was horrible. It almost sounded like the chopper was going to fly apart, uh, just rattling and whatnot. Uh, now, everybody said that make sure that your hitch pin is 16 inches from the tip of your tractor PTO shaft. Uh, and if you read in the manual, it tells you all that. Uh, what they don't tell you is it has an up and down height adjustment on the front bearing of the chopper and right at the PTO shaft going to the tractor. Uh, I adjusted that height pretty close to level, but wasn't perfect. Uh, I didn't think it would be that important, being how other equipment don't normally have an adjustment like that. Uh, we ended up tearing the whole main gearbox apart to make sure nothing was wrong in there. Re Reshimmed all that, tightened all that up. Uh, freed up a universal joint that was on. So back to what I was saying about the PTO. Uh, got all the gearbox tight. Um, got that. Uh, there was a universal on splines that was supposed to free slide back and forward on the knives. It was hung up. Got all that free. It was still rattling. Uh, it ended up being that adjustment on the PTO. So just make sure uh, if you've got one or if you just bought one and it's rattling like crazy and you can't get it to quit when you turn, uh, just make sure your PTO is perfect because that was the only problem with this one. We ended up fighting it for about two weeks and uh, ended up, we had the, I checked the back and forward two or three times, but like I say, just never thought about that up and down. I had got it really close, but it just wasn't perfectly level. Uh, it just needed to be dropped one more hole and uh, just never really thought about it being that important on, on that. Uh, I guess another setup thing about the chopper is uh, with this hay head, the manual said to put it, to, to set it and let it float on the tires, which I really like. Our old one carried the hay head, uh, and when the chopper would go in a bump, of course the hay head would, would dig in the ground, which you probably wouldn't have that much trouble with this chopper because it has duels on it, so you're only going to have as many bumps. But anyway, I like the, the wheel set up. Uh, floating head we were in the bottoms chopping uh, the first couple of loads and the tire blowed out on the header and 
me and Dad were talking about how the manual said to set it up on the wheels, but them wheels just didn't look like they would hold the weight of the header. Well, if you flip two pages in the manual, uh, there's a spring setting on this chopper, and if you're setting up the header, you're, you should be able to grab that hold down bar on the front and pick it up, and uh, it should feel like about 50 pounds of pressure. And ended up we didn't have that set, even reading in the manual to make sure you were supposed to let the wheels ride on the ground. Uh, like I said, it was like two or three pages over before it talked about setting the spring tension. Uh, so that it don't blow the wheels out on the header or blow the tires out in other words um, This chopper has uh, an electrical system on it uh, I guess an auto shut off system safety system, whatever you want to call it uh, But basically it's got a limit switch in the chute uh, between the two blowers that I was talking about If silage is going through the chute it hits that limit switch and if that limit switch is hit or if silage is going through the chute the chopper has to be at 70 percent of the rpm uh, so in other words you're a thousand so your char if your tractor starts choking down or if something breaks or starts slipping on the chopper it has 10 or 12 sensors on the knives and feeder house and everything else and if anything starts slowing down, it automatically shuts down the feeder house and the header. Uh, so far, I really like that system. It's, it's done it uh, three or four times on me, uh, making turns and stuff. And like I say, these are, are pretty big wind rows. Uh, we're pretty much taking in four rows of corn, plus all the grass on the ground. And this chopper has a two-row header, so it's taking in double what it really should be taken in. Um, well, I like that system also. Uh, it's working really good for us. It, it, uh, one time the tractor choked down a little bit and it cut the chopper off quicker than I could hit the clutch and it actually saved the tractor from, from choking down anymore. Um, so that's really nice. But anyway, we're going to keep on chopping. Just thought I'd give y'all a little bit of information on the chopper like I say there what many videos on them and uh, just just some stuff I've learned uh, with reading the books and trying to set it up the proper way the first time we ever run it uh, but yeah we're gonna keep chopping and we'll catch you guys in a little bit hope y'all enjoy the video
All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this video. Had a lot of fun chopping silage this year. Uh, really enjoyed the new chopper. Didn't give us any, any problems at all, actually. Uh, got the silage pile covered here. Silage, uh, as we planned, wasn't very good this year. But anyway, we'll make do with it. Hopefully next year will be better. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.